Our first major concept of waves involves basic definitions. And we're going to look at a FET simulation and examine period and frequency using a speaker. Now when I turn on the speaker without turning on the sound, you can see that the speaker moves in and out. And basically what a speaker is doing is disturbing the air in front of it, creating compressed air, and then as it pulls back, creating expanded air as it makes a vacuum. The expanded air is known as rarefacted air. So as it's pushing forward, it creates a compression wave, which is indicated by the white lines on the diagram. And as it pulls back, it creates a rarefacted wave, indicated by the dark lines on the diagram. Now, those differences in pressure are going to be detected by your eardrum. And then that's what your brain is going to sense as various frequencies as your eardrum vibrates at the same rate that the speaker is moving in and out. Now we also see that the speaker is disturbing the air horizontally. It's disturbing it left to right as it creates the expanded and, and compressed regions of air. And because it's disturbing it in the same direction that the air is actually traveling, we can see that, see that the air is actually traveling in a circular path, but horizontally towards my ear. Because of the disturbance is in the same direction, we say that's a longitudinal wave. Now we want to examine something called frequency. And if I just look at my simulation, we can see that it's making about one wave per second. So a fairly low frequency wave. One wave per second is hitting my eardrum and we would say that has a frequency of 1 Hertz. Now, let's change the frequency and double it. Now we see that the speaker is moving twice as fast, moving in and out at double the rate, approximately. So we would say that it's creating two waves per second. So that would be a frequency of 2 Hertz. Now if I asked you what is the period of the wave, what would you tell me? Well, the definition of the period of the wave is how long it takes for one wave to be generated. And if it's making two waves per second, notice the per second means frequency, so two hertz. If it's making two waves per second, then it takes one half of a second to create one wave. Let's go up an, another notch. Okay, so here we see our speaker is moving in and out quite a bit more rapidly. And let's imagine it's making four waves per second. We could easily measure it by timing how long it takes this speaker to go in and out. Um, if it's making four waves per second, we say that the frequency is four hertz. So how long does it take to make one wave? Well, if it's making four waves in one second, then it would take a quarter of a second, one-fourth of a second, to make one wave. In other words, if it takes one second to make four waves, then each wave only takes a quarter of a second to be generated. So I would say my frequency is four hertz, while my period is one-fourth of a second. And we can see right away the relationship is very, very simple. Frequency is related to the period by the inverse. Now let's use the sim to see what frequency and amplitude actually mean. Now, if you look at the sim, you notice it's gotten a little bit dimmer. I've set the amplitude to be a little bit lower. Now keep in mind this is a simulation and the sounds produced are not going to be appropriate to the actual frequency that we see. So don't worry about that. All we're worried about is what the effects of changing the frequency and changing the amplitude are. So this simulation mathematically will not work out. Just keep that in mind. But conceptually, it will. So let's try it out. If I turn on the audio at this low amplitude, you should be able to barely hear that low-pitched wave. Notice that the speaker is barely moving in and out. So the disturbance from trough to crest is quite small. If I increase the disturbance and get the speaker moving in and out further, but still maintaining the same rate, notice now when it hits my ear it's a little louder. And that's because the extremes are bigger. There's higher pressure when it's compressed and lower pressure when it's rarefacted because it's traveling a greater distance, that speaker. If I really crank it up, you see that it gets really dark 
and louder. So the amplitude in a sound wave only affects the loudness. The bigger the disturbance, the louder the wave's going to be. Now let's have a look at frequency. So right now it's a fairly low frequency wave. Very few waves are being generated per second. If I increase the frequency, watch what happens to the sound. So now I'm making many waves per second, and when it hits my ear, the pitch goes up. So many waves per second, high frequency sound is higher pitched, while low frequency sound is lower pitched. Notice that the waves also get dimmer as they get further away, and that's because they make bigger and bigger circles, so the energy of the wave has to dissipate. So if I move myself further away, as expected, the sound will be diminished. If I get closer and closer to the speaker, the amplitude is bigger because I'm nearer to the actual source and the energy hasn't dissipated as much.